They used to record what was going on inside public transportation. Now, they're just going inside the shark. Come on, let's dive in and find out what's in these things. Hey everybody, this is the opened up DR 505C Plus talking bus uh, digital recording system. So this goes on public transportation buses, it, it recording all the camera information on the bus. Um, and as uh, well, I think we'll see, uh, you know, it gets a, a GPS input, so it has um, location and stuff like that as well. It's all getting recorded for the security purposes on the bus. We've got uh, a smaller board on top of the main motherboard, and each one of them has at least one of these um, media cards inside of it. So let's go ahead and open this thing up. Get this card out of here. This hardware is Samsung. Now, unfortunately, So you can see each of those is actually holding the board in place. So we've got to take those off. So I'm going to give you guys a break while I take those off. We'll be right back. All right, so with all of those nuts taken off, this upper board now loosened up. And there's some ribbon wire holding it in place so get that connector out of the way let's see we've got a couple of wires here get those out of the way and this connector wants to come off like that. We're going to go into more detail on this board in another in a little bit, so we'll hang on here for, with that for a minute. All right, so now we look at this board and we've got a power connection here, nothing interesting other than a power connection. Um, some caps. Nice gold pins on these, but I don't know if I'm going to spend any time digging after them. Um, ICs. We've got jumpers on gold plated pins, but very lightly gold plated, so I'm not going to get too excited about those. We've got some older style tantalum capacitors here. These little guys here are tantalums. Um, I'll look at them under a microscope to confirm, but I'm pretty sure I can see a plus sign on those. Uh, so. But they're really small, so, you know, do you want to mess with cutting those off? You know, that's one of those personal choices that you're going to have to make. Um, this is an aluminum heat sink with FETs, all right? So, those would come off by unscrewing each one of the MOSFETs and then Um, the aluminum heat sink is just on with some little taps there. You just knock that off if you want to take the aluminum heat sink. Um, and then you've got these connectors here, which are clearly gold plated pins, male or female. And then um, the question becomes uh, do you take those off and sell those as gold connector ends to board sort? Which are good space fillers. Or do you leave it on 
if you're selling to your local yard, you need to understand how your local yard would uh, value this kind of card. My, my yard, if I take off this big old heat sink, I think this would go as a high grade. Maybe uh, if these come off easily, I might pull all or some of these off as well. So there's just a little less hanging on here. Um, definitely mid-grade, definitely mid-grade, maybe high-grade with my yard, just the way my yard operates. All right. Um, this IC looks like it's a socket-mounted IC. It is, and nothing extraordinary other than it's an IC, okay? And again, with board sort, it's okay to pull the socket mounted off, um, but you don't wanna be pulling off these if you're gonna sell it to board sort. Uh, because I'm cherry picking uh, for my yard, I may pull one or, in fact, let's go ahead and pull one uh, so that you can watch me do this, just take these are some small um, auto adjustable type channels, you know, uh, pretty convenient. Just grab hold of the IC, give it a twist. Sometimes you have to go back and forth. Sometimes you can just pop it off in one direction. Sometimes it'll just break. So, all righty then. Okay, to remove this main board, <clears throat> we've got a couple of screws to take out. And these posts. These posts are non-magnetic. I need to um, scrape them, and I think they're brass. Okay, so <clears throat> there's the main board, and then it has this processor card or media card. And this is what, at the end of the route, would have been pulled and loaded for um, re uh, archiving um, back at the uh, depot. And then each one of these boards uh, has a nice um, older style kind of ram. So give it a little flick on either side push it back a little bit and then it pops out. Nice RAM card there. We're going to go into this board in more detail. And this frame is aluminum but it's got a lot of ferrous so this door latch part is ferrous um, so fortunately that just screws on so that'll come off nice and easy these thumb tabs or screw tabs are also ferrous screws they should pop off easy enough so no big deal there. Um, and then we have a, a power connector back here. That's a plastic socket uh, with four little metal nuts holding it in place. So we'll pull those off and then the thread pieces um, will need to get popped off as well. And then this is a nice piece of sheet steel. Uh, these guys here, these little screw studs are not magnetic, so that's pretty nice. These are magnetic here, but they'll pop off pretty easy too. 
All right, so this is the <clears throat> Talking Bus Digital Recorder System DR500C Plus um, main board. You can see that it's a pretty nice main board. We already took off a ribbon wire that was connected there in order to be able to see things. Uh, it's got a nice RAM stick on it, older style connection but a pretty decent little RAM stick that will go in the RAM collection. Each one of these I assume is going to have a RAM stick. It has quite a few nice chips and such. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven big flat tops, the flat packs. We have quite a few uh, yellow tantalums. We have a number of MLCCs. Number of smaller ICs. And we have a large socket mounted IC right here. Comes out real nice and easy. All right, so that's a nice little socket mounted IC. We'll throw that in the IC bucket. We have quite a few gold plated pins with jumpers. So we can pull the jumper off uh, because it came off a gold plated pin. It most likely has gold plated connector inside there. And that'll just go in with the gold jumper bucket. There's another one. Okay. Uh, this board would definitely be a peripheral board for uh, board sort. <clears throat> uh, my yard doesn't have that grade, so my yard is either going to take this as a high grade or a medium. It's going to give them some difficulty trying to assess what it is. I want to get them to take it as a high grade, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cherry pick a couple of flat packs off of it, the tantalums, and otherwise leave it populated. That way, uh, they're more likely to buy it from me as a high-grade board. Now, because I have to ship things to board sort, uh, it's not economical for me to ship board sort peripheral boards. By the time I get done paying the shipping, um, I might as well just take it to my yard, even though they pay a little bit less. I actually come out further ahead in profit. So, um, All right, so let's uh, go ahead and uh, pull off um, one of these. These are nice flat packs. The, you can feel the fingers separate underneath the chisel as I cut away at it. It comes loose real easy. And there you have a nice flat pack to go in with the connection, the collection of flat packs. And the tantalums. Just like I showed you before, just stick your chisel down there, give it a little twist. You can gently hold your finger over it to make sure that the tantalum doesn't flip off and go, you know, launching across the uh, workbench somewhere like that one wanted to do. It's interesting with surface mounts, some of them can uh, just pop right off, some of them take a little work. Another tantalum. I'm debating whether or not I want to take all the tantalums off. Might want to leave a. But I think I'm going to go ahead and get these tantalums because here's one here that I'm going to get from the coming at the short side, just so you can see that. See that one pops right off without any trouble. There you go. Um, I don't think this is going to be an issue for my yard to if I take all these tantalums off of here. They're good guys. They're not experts when it comes to e-waste. They just have been taught what to look for. We've been doing business together for a long time, so they, they know me and they pretty much trust my grading on the e-waste stuff.
let's um, go ahead and get this ribbon wire off. This, these ribbon wires are mounted directly to the board, uh, so that it's not just like a socket that you would pull out. So here we go, um, in in. You all have seen me do this with ribbon wire before. And here you can see the gold-plated connector that goes in my low-grade connectors. And you can also just pull them right out of this. This this one looks pretty good because it's nice. They're nice and big. They stick out really far. Makes it real easy to go ahead and pull them out. Let's try different angles for you all. Okay. All right. So. And um, I had a lot of questions since I posted my video on depopulating boards about um, uh, is it worth depopulating boards and things like that. Those are all very valuable, important questions that you have to ask yourself. And the answer, I'm sorry, is just very situationally dependent. Um, so if you live close to a place like board sort, well, then you probably do not want to depopulate because you're going to get more money uh, for the boards in their natural state. If you do not live close to a company like board sort, then you have to so, um, you know, run the balance of what uh, does my local yard pay, which usually isn't as good as a place like board sort, uh, with the mailing charges and stuff like that. Or am I going to process some of the material myself and see if I can get the gold and silver and platinum and palladium and all those kind of things. Uh, and that's not always an easy thing to do. It looks easy. A lot of people make it look easy. Uh, but you've got dangerous chemicals you're working with. You need to do a lot of research to get prepared for it. Uh, you need to buy the proper safety equipment. And then you have to figure out what you're going to do with all those acids and things after you're done. So. Uh, it's not, it's, you should not enter lightly into processing your own gold. All right, <clears throat> MLCC is right here. Again, <clears throat> you just take your chisel or a flathead screwdriver. And let me scoot it up here a little bit. So chisel, flathead screwdriver, give it a twist. MLCC comes loose. Some MLCCs are magnetic, some are not. The ones that are not magnetic most likely have a higher silver content, which is why they're not magnetic. And um, some people, uh, as I mentioned in my depopulating video, some people separate their MLCCs uh, by magnetic and non-magnetic. Uh, you can also put your chisel up against a line of them, rest the, uh, gently rest your finger on top and scoot the chisel along. Now the MLCCs are trapped between your, the blade and your finger. You can get them in your fingers and drop them in your bucket. If you do that, be careful that you don't have other components along that path, because otherwise all you're doing is adding things like resistors and stuff to your um, MLCCs. <clears throat> Again, remember I'm a cherry picker, so for me, uh, taking my time and going through like this <clears throat> is a valuable exercise. Uh, <clears throat> some people will just take an air hammer with a, chis a chisel blade on it and boom, and take everything off and then sort it out. Uh, and other people will use a heat gun or a hot sand bath to uh, loosen the solder and be able to pluck the stuff off. All right, these gold pins here. Uh, you can take an edge cutter or your chisel. In this case, my chisel is working really well to lift up that little plastic part down at the bottom. And then you can either take a small edge cutter and pull the pin off. And it with these pins, they're Gold plating usually doesn't go all the way down to the board. In fact, it usually goes just goes down to the plastic. And so when you pull it off, 
you'll see there's a tiny little bit uh, that is not gold plated. The rest of it is, and this is a dark yellow gold plating, so this is pretty heavy duty. Um, that'll go in with the gold plated pins. Uh, the other thing that you can uh, try to do is just take pliers and get hold of it and twist it and see if that'll pop off. All right. And these just happen to be uh, forceps uh, from an old dental kit that I uh, got off eBay. They can come in handy for grabbing things sometimes. Or you can take your needle nose. Now my needle nose, you can see they're kind of bent, so they don't grab too well. Uh, but still, get in there, give it a twist, and you pull the pin out of the board. And here you can see uh, the the pin is much. This part was down inside the board. This is the exposed gold plated part. All right, so I'm just going to pull one more flat pack and let's see. Yeah, it'll fit. And that one's a little bit tough though. Sometimes there you can get a hold of them with channels and give it a twist and they'll pop off. But this one's mounted in there pretty hard. So with this one, I'm just going to give it a chisel tap. It'll just loosen things up. There we go. And then we got that flat back off. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put this board now, and nothing on the back. I'm going to go ahead and put this board in my high grade bucket now. And then um, we'll see, uh, you know, what happens when we take it to the, uh, to my scrapyard, which way they decide to go with it.